Hi everyone, welcome to this week's um, video. We're going to take a look at the wall garden today, progress in the kitchen garden. We'll have a look at the pumpkins and how the veg are doing in that. And Anthony is going to introduce you to plant of the week this week. So let's get going and have a look at the veg. So we're here at the pumpkin patch um, that is now, and the pumpkins just adored the heat that we had last week. Um, these were planted probably about six or eight weeks ago by a, or a group of volunteers on the Friday. And as you can see, they're coming on beautiful. They have massive leaves. There's a couple of different varieties here. One very good one is um, jack-o'-lantern that has lovely um, big orange um, pumpkins on it. So I just wanted to show you, I think it's very interesting with the flowers, but you can see these are the, the female flowers in here. If Paul can get a close up. And these are the small pumpkins just starting to develop. And how you can tell the female flowers apart, this is the ovary starting to, to, ripe, to swell out and, and become the fruit. And we just have a look at the male flowers here, which kind of come to the top because they want their pollen to be um, spread around the place. And they don't have any ovaries. So you can see they, they're not going to form the, the fruit. So their function is to fertilize the ovaries and then the ovaries will swell um, to form the pumpkins hopefully this October. So that's just a little view of the pumpkins. So we're going to take a look at some of the beds um, going down along the um, wall garden here where we have fruit, uh, soft fruit and veg. So the first bed here we have currants and gooseberries. Um, and you can see we have a nice mix of companion planting through with the calendula and the echium blue bed are there. Um, so I, I think I love the flowers um, with the, the veg and, and the fruit. I think they give it a lovely lift. But what I wanted to show you, which isn't so lovely, and this is a pest of the um, gooseberry that you have to really watch out for at this time of the year. So I have the larvae of it here in my hand, if Paul can zoom in. It's the gooseberry sawfly larvae. So it's a caterpillar. Um, and they like overnight they will strip the leaves and you can see already here they've done some damage so you have to check the gooseberries daily at this time of the year because um they're very they're hatching out now all the time so it has to be something that's done very regular and it's the, the best control of it is to just go and either throw them over a ditch far far away or squish them and i know some people don't like doing that but anyway there it, it's your choice so this is soft fruit gooseberries and currants. Uh, the next bed here is autumn flowering raspberries. Um, on the outside here, tayberries and loganberries on the two um, structures here and more autumn flowering raspberries. We do mostly autumn flowering raspberries now because we find that the summer flowering raspberries are getting a fungal infection and they die off after a year. So um, the autumn, are, are much more reliable croppers. So that's our soft fruit. And then we have uh, leeks planted here. There's a little bit of weed now, so don't zoom in on this M Paul because we don't want to get the weed. Um, and again, I love a lot of uh, flower and color in with the vegetables as well. I think it, it brings in beneficial insects, but I think it looks lovely as well. And a lot of these um, are used for cut flowers for the for the house here as well. So the sweet pea there um, in the centre and there is some runner beans, broad beans and monch too at the back, which have been very slow really to get going. Um, but again, now with a bit of heat um, last week and a bit of watering, they're finally starting to get established. Uh, we have some onions here and some sweet corn, which again, just adore the heat last week. So it's doing really good. The brassicas have um, taken off here. Uh, you can see the cloches on the more um, newly planted ones. So we put a clash over them for a couple of weeks when they're planted out first because, oh my, um, the problems with pigeons this year, uh, slugs love them. Um, and so if they get a couple of weeks where they can get established, then the clashes can be taken off. And you can see the wool uh, as a mulch. The wool came from the farm. James gave us some wool that um, he had left from the sheep shearing and we're finding it a really effective um, mulch because it keeps down um, the weeds while the plants are getting established. There is still a bit coming through, but it gives them a chance when they're small. They don't get kind of overwhelmed by the, the weeds. So that's the brassicas. 
Next is, um, this is permanently um, planted with rhubarb and perennial kale and some asparagus. And I'm just putting some green manures there um, at the back for the area that isn't being used. Um, so the rhubarb is kind of finished for the moment. Do a bit of weeding there as well. And then there is some root crops here. Uh, Mike has beetroot, carrots, um, parsnips growing, and then some potatoes which have um, started uh, being harvested, the new potatoes, so which are doing well as well. So yeah, it's been a slow start. Like I said, the spring was difficult. I found it very difficult, particularly for the vegetable growing to get things off, but finally things are kind of getting going. Um, while we're here, uh, Paul, I think it's worth uh, spanning down there to the wildflower strip that we have. And there is um, there was a perennial mix zone last year, so we didn't dig this up this year. We just left it and left whatever annuals came through. And these perennial chicory have come through, um, which are just a b providing a beautiful haze of blue. So we're delighted with those um, this year. And there's some... Um, oxide daisy and clover and mallows and yeah it's it's working really well so we're delighted with that for bringing beneficial insects in as well and pollinators okay so just to finish off this week anthony is going to show you the plant of the week so um, hope to see you in the garden soon all the best take care so good morning guys and once again a very warm welcome to this week's plant of the week and this week we have our probably most requested plant I'd say among season ticket holders and indeed other visitors also. It's an Alstroemeria. Uh, this one is Indian summer. Uh, you can see the kind of beautiful kind of uh, greeny browny foliage. Um, this will flower from May all the way through to October. Okay uh, and if I just step aside gently you'll see what this beautiful plant turns into that stunner. Okay common name is Peruvian lily. Uh, You'll need to water it in well at the beginning, but after that, then it will simply take care of itself. So this size plant that you see in the pot here will eventually become this size in say maybe kind of three, four years. Um, as I say, our most requested plant by far, it's at a bargain price of 1250, but the plant sales at the moment, which is actually very cheap for this type of plant. Uh, there's, a, there's a few left in stock, but don't leave it too long. So this week's plant of the week, Alstroemeria Indian Summer.